customize your car insurance with Liberty Mutual. So you only pay for what you need. <laughs> Hot dog or chicken? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Life doesn't stop for diabetes. Be ready for every moment with Glucerna. It's the number one doctor recommended brand that's scientifically designed to help manage your blood sugar. Live every moment. Glucerna. All right, before we go, we got a little something for the folks out there, don't yes. we? Yes, we have a little sneak peek of tonight's secret celebrity renovation on CBS. Look, Chris Paul may have come up short in his quest for an NBA title, but he is a true champion, though, in this episode. Bring the tissues, y'all, because you're going to cry. Take care, everybody. So happening now. Health officials again urging residents to get vaccinated amid a new surge in COVID-19 hospitalizations. The breakdown between those who are vaccinated and those who are not next. And with the rising concerns of the Delta variant and the new school year about to start, coming up why the Northeast Independent School District says it will not notify parents of new cases in their schools. A whole new weather pattern is settling in. I'm going to be back to let you know what that means for weekend temperatures coming right up. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five new COVID concerns amid a new surge in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. Local health and elected officials again urging residents to get vaccinated. They held a news conference this afternoon at the county's emergency operations center. Garrett Berger was there and joins us now with the latest. Garrett, good afternoon. What are we seeing in the county right now? Well, the mayor noted that compared to earlier spikes back last summer and this winter, we aren't really seeing that high of numbers. The rolling seven day average is 363 cases, but both he and other officials focused in on the more severe cases we are seeing, noting that 418 people are in area hospitals tonight because of COVID-19. Of that number, officials say 95% or more are unvaccinated. So while officials say there are some breakthrough cases of vaccinated people testing positive for COVID, about approximately 12% of the current cases, the vaccinated people are rarely getting the severe form of the illness. So officials urged residents to get the vaccine. One hospital president said the city isn't anticipating another surge. It's in the middle of one. The indicators are all there. The trajectories are all pointing in the same direction. We've admitted over 70 patients today, 70 new patients today in San Antonio area hospitals. We have 121 patients in the ICU and 50 patients are unfortunately on ventilators across our city. Now, right now, the most recent vaccination numbers show more than 62% of people 12 and older here in Bear County are fully vaccinated and three quarters of people have at least one dose. The officials say there are about 100,000 people out there who are either due or long overdue for their second shot and they want them to come in. Now, one Metro Health official did say that if you're sending your kids to school, that's happening in a couple weeks. The time to get them vaccinated if they aren't already is right now. That's because there's a waiting period in between you get when you get your first shot and your second. And depending on your immune system, it takes a while to get build up that protection they need for that first day of school. Live in San Antonio, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. And with one year round campus in session and other schools starting soon, Northeast ISD has sent parents a letter that some are finding alarming. The district is now changing how COVID-19 exposures will be handled this upcoming school year. Jesse de Goyado tells us why parents say they're worried, especially now that virtual learning is no longer an option. We must follow what the state tells us to do. Northeast ISD spokesperson Aubrey Chancellor says the district is abiding by Governor Greg Abbott's executive order, not requiring students to wear masks or other restrictive activities. NEISD says that includes quarantining students. The superintendent's letter says COVID-19 exposure will be treated like other contagious diseases. The letter is not meant to state that we believe COVID to be equivalent to the flu or strep throat. It's merely a way to explain this is how the state now wants us to handle it. As a result, she says the district isn't required to send letters alerting parents of a COVID exposure, but it will notify Metro Health that can then contact parents. You know, we just cannot do anything about it. We are bound to what the state tells us that we can and cannot do. I think our state leaders are failing us. They're failing our students. 
students, they're failing our families, especially with the D variant being so prevalent right now and affecting more and more children under the age of 12. A former PTA president, Arambura, says she also worries some parents won't do what they're being asked to do, self-screen their children before sending them to school. I wish we could trust people to do the right thing, but unfortunately we've seen people that refuse to be vaccinated, that refuse to wear masks. NEISD says, however, it'll still continue emphasizing other COVID-19 protocols, such as hand cleaning and social distancing, and students do have the option to wear a mask if they choose. Jesse DeGollado, KSAT 12 News. And we reached out to a few other districts in our area. Northside ISD says their procedures and protocols around notifying parents of cases or exposure have not been finalized. San Antonio ISD says it's waiting for the Texas Education Agency to release guidance. You can read more about this at KSAT.com. COVID cases increasing across the United States. 48 states reporting at least a 10% increase in their seven-day average compared to last week. As Daryl Forges explains, despite warnings, the daily rate of people becoming fully vaccinated is dwindling, especially in Alabama, which has the fewest number of vaccinations in the entire United States. William Hughes is recovering from COVID-19 in Arkansas, unvaccinated and hospitalized. He spent days struggling to breathe, fighting for his life. I asked him if I was going to make it, and he didn't know. He told me that I was young, I didn't have any underlying issues, and that they were going to do the best that they could do. U.S. health experts say over 99% of COVID deaths reported are from unvaccinated people. As cases continue to climb, the push to get Americans vaccinated is intensifying. The new cases in COVID are because of unvaccinated folks. Almost 100% of the new hospitalizations are with unvaccinated folks. Alabama is the least vaccinated state in the country. Less than 35% of people are fully vaccinated, according to the CDC. Governor Kay Ivey says she's disappointed with the numbers in her state. Folks supposed to have common sense. But it's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us stay. For people like Hughes, the hope now is that Americans will take heed, get vaccinated, and save their own lives. It's just made me wish that I had gotten the vaccine. I mean, the vaccine may not have kept me from getting COVID, but it may have uh, decreased greatly the, the pain and suffering I had to go through. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. Why did he do it? Testimony continues today in the trial of Otis McCain. This afternoon, the jury hearing new testimony from a social worker who was in charge of assessing McCain's overall mental health the day after he was arrested. Erica Hernandez back inside the courtroom today. Erica joins us. Erica, how did that social worker describe McCain's mental state after his arrest? Yeah, so the jury heard from that social worker who was at the Bear County Jail in 2016, and this was all to get a better understanding of what Otis McCain's mental health was like the day after he was arrested. Now, social worker Elwood Brown stated that this assessment is to make sure McCain wasn't having homicidal or suicidal thoughts. Brown also told the jury that McCain's emotions were all over the place, and he was not only angry, but remorseful. He basically said that, you know I mean, it wasn't about the gentleman that he, he had actually um, shot was just about the uniform. He was trying to make a statement towards the uniform. Now, this afternoon, we also heard from the emergency room doctor who treated Detective Marconi at Bamsey. Dr. Erica Simon got emotional while speaking about all the life-saving efforts they gave Detective Marconi. I look down because my feet are warm. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And my feet are warm because I'm standing in a pool of blood. Um, we had given him so much blood to try to resuscitate him that it was pouring from his head down the ED bed that he was on and pulling around my feet. Now, right now, the medical examiner is on the stand. This is the last witness for the state. We'll have more on that testimony coming up at 6. Reporting live from the Kilden Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. And a man is in custody after he was shot at 
at a West Side convenience store. San Antonio police tell us the shooting unfolded in the 7000 block of Westfield. They say the suspect became belligerent while he was inside the store. He went behind the counter and knocked over items. The clerk reportedly told the man to stop and told him he wasn't allowed to be behind the counter. When the suspect didn't listen, the clerk got a handgun and shot the suspect in the arm. The suspect was taken to University Hospital. He was arrested on charges unrelated to this incident. She's accused of beating up a woman and then shooting another woman who tried to intervene. Now 21-year-old Faith Barrientes is facing charges. It happened Sunday at the Sierra Madre Apartments in the 400 block of North Hine Road. San Antonio police say Barrientes and two other women beat one victim till she lost consciousness as she was leaving a party. Barrientes then shot another woman in the arm when she tried to help. Barrientes was arrested yesterday. Her bond set at $200,000. We've learned the name of a man killed in a crash last night. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as 56-year-old John Cordoba. Investigators say he slipped while walking along Blanco Road near Humner and he was hit by a driver. The driver said he said he tried to avoid Cordoba, but couldn't switch lanes in time. Cordoba died in the hospital. Today, just barely hitting 90 degrees. The average high 96, that extra moisture in our soil, keeping the temperatures down a little bit today compared to average, despite a lot of sunshine out there. So uh, another day where temperatures were unseasonably, I don't wanna say cool, but low I think is the best way to put it 95 now in Del Rio 93 Eagle Pass 91 in Seguin and even West Kerrville fairly uniform temperatures out there many backyard thermometers reading lower 90s including Windcrest at 92 and Bernie 93 pretty uneventful this evening a completely different weather pattern is taking shape. So dry conditions, a lot of sunshine. Of course, you'll feel the mugginess in the air and then clouds increasing overnight tonight and just lingering around for the early morning hours come tomorrow. We'll talk more about the weekend Saharan dust, how hot it's going to get coming up. Had me fooled for a second. I really thought it was going to be a little cooler. Yeah, Not possible. I wish. Well, the roads are pretty busy this Friday afternoon. Yeah, our Samuel King joins us now with more on some potential traffic trouble spots out there. Samuel. Well, Steve and Alicia, we have one at I-10 at Pro Band. This is the eastbound lanes there. You can see a crew still working on that. So we'll take a bigger look at that here uh, at the wall this afternoon. And you can see uh, crews still out there. At least one lane closed there. So watch out for that. This is how that looks uh, on the map. Traffic down to nine miles uh, per hour. Looking at the rest of the region, we do uh, have some issues on Loop 410 as well. But we want to take a look at that travel time inside a loop 410 and I-10. It'll take you at least 16 minutes to get from 410 to downtown. So watch out for that. Also on the northwest side, loop 410, half a slow down there, have a crash near Fredericksburg, a 13 to 14 minutes in each direction between I-10 and 151. Coming up at 6, we'll have a more on any trouble spots and also a look at the weekend construction issues, especially on 1604. Thank you, Samuel. And if you've received your first advanced child tax credit payment, Heads up, you might start receiving calls, emails, texts from scammers who are after your personal information. What the IRS wants you to know next. The first advanced tax credit payments to parents of children just went out, but already scammers are at it. The IRS is warning families that imposters are trying to trick them out of valuable information. Total on your side's Marilyn Moritz on the red flags that signal a fake. Families have already begun receiving the first of six monthly payments, up to $300 per child, advances on their next child tax credit from Uncle Sam. Yeah, I'm very happy about it. And so are the scammers. The IRS is warning parents to be on the lookout for a variety of phone, email, text message, and social media scams targeting families eligible for the credit. You are almost a prime target for a scammer to say, we're going to trick them. We're going to trip them up and say, you're Credit's on the way, but we need more info for this next month. Click here. Jason Meza with the BBB says scammers are taking advantage of current events and posing as the IRS. Trying to get information, trying to get a line of credit from your bank. They're trying to get something out of you. 
The IRS says beware any communication offering to help you sign up for the credit or get it faster. To help you spot a fake, the IRS says it does not contact taxpayers by email, text, or social media to request information, does not leave recorded, urgent, or threatening messages, and does not ask for payment by gift card, wire, or cryptocurrency. The IRS is using 2019 and 2020 tax returns to automatically deliver these payments. Most people don't have to do a thing. And you cannot get them any faster. If you do have questions about your child tax credit, go directly to irs.gov and look it up. As for those emails, text messages, and phone calls, hang up and delete. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, we were joking around about this cold front. Oh, <laughs> really, 91 degrees in July, we should not be complaining. Well, I mean, you still have to blast the AC when you get in your it's car. It's very so. true. I'm complaining. I could do, I could do with less, <laughs> less humidity, Adam. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and a bit of haze out there. I noticed that today, especially if you're on a flyover ramp in town, driving 410, 1604, any one of those big ramps, and you look way off in the distance. If you do it often enough, you'll gauge a difference between days. And today, you noticed a little extra. That was the Saharan dust in the air. So we're going to update you on that and let you know how long it's going to stick around here in a moment. But sunny and dry stretch of weather is here for several days. However, that doesn't mean we're going to really crank up the heat. We're not talking triple digits. We're talking temperatures near average for this time of year. So seasonable conditions. All right, let's get right to it and talk about rainfall because our rainy stretch this week, <laughs> this batch of rain that we had over the past uh, five days has come to an end. And since July 1st, we've picked up 4.38 inches. That's two inches above average. So pretty good, especially by July standards. Year to date, we've had nearly 22 inches of precipitation. Notice how I say precipitation because some of that includes the liquid equivalent of the snowfall that we had in February. And that's about four inches above average. So we're doing pretty well. We're in a good position. Aquifer about 10 feet above average for this time of year right now. Look at the rainfall estimates since Monday. Missing out in parts of the hill country and north of Highway 90 here, particularly Edwards County and Rial County. However, elsewhere, we had some pockets of heavy rain. I mean, Sutherland Springs had over three inches of rain. Northern Maverick County, nearly three inches of rain. And across the state, good maintenance rain. Again, this is since Monday, and we like to see that maintaining our lack of drought. Yes, yesterday, Thursday, the drought monitor was updated. Of course, we were busy looking at the radar and storm, so we didn't get to it at 5 o'clock, but here it is for you. And this is great to see. Only 3% of Texas is considered in drought. 3%. That's it. If we went back three months ago, it was 67% of the Lone Star State. And actually, you noticed a lot of red in the desert southwest and they're in deep drought there. However, monsoon season, it's acting up and they've got a little extra kick from the upper level low that was over us yesterday. Now it's over New Mexico. It's drifting westward, bringing some much needed moisture and helping out with the moisture in the drought stricken desert southwest and parts of the Rocky Mountains. Meanwhile, for us, upper level high here, Big Blue H, that's coming in off the Gulf of Mexico and we all know that means dry conditions and some sunshine. However, a little extra haze in the air today from the Saharan dust. It's not that thick out there. It's light to moderate, but there is a heavier plume that's over the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to move in, especially along the Gulf coastline tomorrow morning. So if you are at the beaches, you'll really notice the extra haze and a little extra dust in the air around here. It's going to be very similar to today. So through tomorrow, we'll still have the dust in the air. By Sunday, it disperses out and we see it breaking up and we'll have more crisp color blue to the sky. 90 right now, dew point is 73, so obviously muggy outside. We're used to that, but that makes it feel like 98 degrees. That's the heat index. Divine's 91 now, Bernie and Bulverde 88. 91 Converse, Pleasanton 94, Del Rio at 98, and Laredo, the only location on the map here at triple digits being 101. Now tomorrow, I think we'll start the day in the mid 70s, just like today. Our morning lows aren't going to change for at least seven days. So mid 70s during the next several mornings. Low to mid 90s for high temperatures. Tomorrow we'll say about 94, mostly sunny. A little bit breezy, south southeasterly wind at 10 to 20. 
I mentioned that dust that's going to hang around by Sunday. A lot of sunshine, mid 90s again, good, good pool weather this weekend, but it's the breeze that if you're going fishing on the bays or if you're on the bay side, you're going to notice that breeze. It's going to kick up the water on the bays, choppy on Saturday, and then not quite as choppy on Sunday. Sunday's the better of the two days on the back bays. Looking ahead next week, some slight rain chances by Wednesday, but right now, just slight. Slight. We talked about earlier about a new app about swimming, Swimply. And Swimply. Yeah, so if you don't have a pool, and we talk about pool weather, well, now you can be included because you can rent a pool. There you go, Swimply. rent a pool. All right, let's go to California right now where the temperatures are not a concern. Neither is rain, it looks like. No. But Dak Prescott no, is. No. Yes, he is. 71 degrees and very breezy today. In fact, the best day we've had in Dallas Cowboys training game. And I think Dak would argue his best day was yesterday because it was his first day back in Oxnard. When we come back, you'll hear from Dak for the first time in training camp. And looks like Texas and OU headed to the SEC maybe closer than you think. Coming up. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp here in California. We were not allowed to watch practice today, but that doesn't mean we don't have anything to talk about. That's because Dak is back, making his first appearance at the Dallas Cowboys training camp on Thursday with his first practice in the new McCarthy era. Prescott and the rest of the quarterbacks will be wearing red jerseys. A reminder, no contact, but he still have defenders at his feet for the first time around his surgically repaired ankle. I've definitely buried it, um, but yeah, I mean, just uh, being honest, obviously you want to get a few days and you want to get a week or so ahead of you uh, in the books and then see if there's residual pain or anything like that or soreness. Um, obviously, after the first day wasn't much. Uh, it was just good to get back out there, uh, fully moving, being a full participant and everything. Uh, it's exciting just being back with the guys, and uh, it's the last thing I'm thinking about, but obviously going to just uh, see, where, see where I'm at as I continue to go on to make sure that I can set a right plan to take care of it. All right, when Dak came onto the field here in Oxnard, it appeared he paused for just a moment to give thanks. What was going through his mind? The walk onto the field um, and then just before I actually crossed the line. Um, and that's something I do well before the injury. Um, so now just been a long time since I've been, uh, been out there. Uh, been a while since we've been obviously in Oxnard. Uh, it was a special moment just to think about where I was, think about all the hard work, all the support and everything that went into uh, me getting back out there and just being able to go do what I love again. One of the best plays of training camp so far was Dak's pass to Malik Turner. In fact, Dak even rolls out to find him, and our Billy Caldera is right there. Looking forward to more of those here in training camp. It looks as if the deal right now between Texas and OU to go to the SEC may be very closer to than you think. That's according to the Austin American Statesman. In saying so, they have a source that says this deal could be done within a week or so. And in doing so, they have not consulted at all with Texas A&M. They've been held out of the discussions. They say this has been going on for a minimum right now of six months. What a day for Patty Mills. We're so proud of the San Antonio Spurs product. Became the first indigenous Australian to carry the country's flag flag in the opening ceremonies of the Olympics today. Of course, we'll have more on Dak, including something he didn't say that is creating a controversy. Got that for you coming up live in six. Live from California, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right. And we'll be back after the break. Before we go, I want to tell you about a situation downtown. This uh, is I-10 at the Y. We have an overturned 18-wheeler, so that's definitely causing some snarls in traffic. We'll keep an eye on it, Steve and Alicia. I believe that's right by the Fine Silver Building. Yeah, we'll have an update at 6. Thank you, Samuel. Thanks for watching the News at 5.